We want to look at some more advanced algorithms, but before doing so, we have to make sure that the fundamentals are known. And that's what we're going to look at in this video. So I'm going to go through some preliminaries for more advanced algorithms. And um, it's not a recap. I'm just kind of listing topics. And we'll ask a few questions. And if you have difficulties answering those questions, you might want to look at those materials again before um, diving into more advanced algorithms. So what are the prerequisites that we are interested in. First of all, you should be able to do asymptotic analysis, so O notation theta, omega, solving recurrences. Um, I will have an example in a moment. Uh, basic data structures, so things like heaps, um, binary search trees, hash tables. These should simply be in your toolbox. Then different uh, algorithm design techniques. Uh, what is an incremental algorithm? How do I design incremental algorithms? Divide and conquer, dynamic programming, greedy also. Graphs and in particular fundamental graphs, algorithms like breadth first search, depth first search, uh, topological sorting, shortest path algorithms, uh, minimum spanning tree like uh, Prim's algorithm, Kruskal's algorithm, all of those you should know. Then in terms of complexity theory, NP hardness, um, um, what it means, how to do a reduction, at least a simple one. Then in terms of a bit more advanced techniques, amortized analysis uh, is important in more advanced algorithms design. So aggregate analysis, accounting method, potential method. So potential method is probably the one that we will be using most in the more advanced um, analyses. Then Good to know, but uh, we um, will not have those as prerequisites. Uh, flow algorithms, so computing maximum flows, Ford Ferguson, Edmund, Carp, Max Fuhrman, Cut, and also some uh, basic knowledge on approximation algorithms cannot harm. Yeah, so think about it which of these topics you know. Um, where do you have to look up um, a few things again? maybe watch a video or read a chapter in a book. I will go through those, at least the first ones, one by one, um, raise a few questions just to, for you to see whether you um, remember what it's about, starting with asymptotic notation or asymptotic analysis and O notation. So this is the definition of big O. This you should know, should know also how to deal with it, given a function, say in what class it falls, and then also with that, solve recurrences. So substitution method, using recursion trees, master theorem, always a useful toolbox for at least uh, simple settings um, and works very nicely. So to check that, have a look at this um, algorithm. Um, what is its running time? And maybe just to point out, because it might not e easily be, to, it might not be easy to see what the input size here is. So it, I mean, it's defined here in the first line. N, N is essentially an input size. So J minus I. This is just defined in this way so that we can make recursive calls. Uh, so um, here we have I and J. And for instance, in this re first recursive call, um, the I plus zero. So I takes the role of I, and I plus N half takes. Uh, the role of J. So this is a recursive call on a subproblem of size in half. Now have a look at this algorithm and analyze its running time. Let's start with what is its recurrence. Before the recurrence, what we have is we have three recursive calls. And I already looked at the first one and said it's on an input of half the size. Uh, that is actually true for all three recursive calls. So we have three recursive calls on an input of uh, half the size. So our recurrence will look like the running time on size n is so three times the running time on half the size. And then plus whatever the algorithm otherwise does in terms of work. Now this is actually the base case, um, which is only O of 1. And then for the complete recurrence, you should also put in the base case. So that is our recurrence. That you should be able to derive from, from that algorithm. 
So what does it solve to? The easy way here is using the master theorem. What are we looking at? So this is typically called A, so that's 3, B is 2. We are comparing N to the log A to the base of B. We're comparing that to our F of N. F of N is this term back here, so we're comparing it to a constant. N to the log A base B, so this is N to the log 3 base 2. That definitely goes faster than um, a constant, so that will dominate the running time. The master theorem gives us that the running time is, oops, of course this should be O or theta of N to the log to the, of 3 base 2. So much about asymptotic notation and analysis. Data structures, basic data structures. So we are on the one side have abstract data types, so priority queues, for instance, um, sorted sequences, dictionaries, and then also corresponding data structures. So priority queues, you will typically use heaps, sorted sequences, by balanced binary search trees, um, dictionaries, tables are the obvious choice. Um, now that I just said that in that way, Maybe first question um, for you. So if I want to have a priority queue, which of the data structures mentioned are suitable? I mean, I already mentioned that heaps are suitable. So the only additional um, thing that you hopefully know is that balanced by research trees also give good priority queues. Um, depending on which operations you're really interested in, uh, while hash tables obviously do not. Another question. So what is the difference between the heap property and the binary search tree property? So heaps and binary search tree, there was a property each. So what, what are these properties? So for the heap, let's say we have a max heap. There is the property said if I have the parent and I have the two children and um, have my key here, then that is larger or equal than the key in both of the children. The property, binary search tree property. So first of all, this the ordering is not top down, but from or bottom up, depending on how you see it, but uh, left to right. And I'm also not making just a statement of the children, but, but about the subtree. So if I have the key of k at a node, then in the left subtree, everything should be smaller or equal k, and in the right subtree, everything should be larger or equal k. Good. Let's also have a question about hashing, namely, what is the difference between chaining and open addressing, and what is chaining and open addressing about anyway? So in hashing, we have elements of a large universe. We map them to a much smaller hash table. And the problem there is that we could have collisions, elements that are hashed to the same thing. Chaining and open addressing are strategies to handle those collisions. Chaining is very simple. You put things into a linked list if you have a collision. Um, and then under suitable assumptions, and if your table is large enough, those linked lists in expectation won't get too long. Open addressing uh, is a different strategy. If I have a collision, then the hash function tells me the next cell where I could map the element. And then if there's again in a collision, the next one and so on. Good. So much about data structures, algorithm paradigms. Common algorithm paradigms are incremental algorithms. So I have elements, I insert them one by one. And in every step, I make sure that I have I update the structure that I want to have eventually. So I have the solution for the elements seen so far. Divide and conquer, I take my elements. I, uh, I for instance, split them into two halves or split them differently. Solve the problem on, on the subsets and then merge or combine the solution. The dynamic programming makes use of, the, or it's used in settings where I have a problem. Um, which I can reduce to subproblems, an optimal solution to the subproblem 
it can be used uh, in finding the optimal solution for the actual problem. Um, and uh, yeah, there I solve and store those sub problems to eventually get the solution that I want to have. And greedy, simply based on some criterion, finds the next element of the solution and continues. So let's have a quiz about a, a couple of algorithms and what paradigms they correspond to. So, insertion sort. Insertion sort is a prototypical example for an incremental algorithm. In insertion sort, the metaphor is you have these cards, so you pick up the next one, put them into the, in, into the right position, pick up the next one, and so on. So that's incremental. Selection sort. The selection sort I would see as a greedy algorithm because you find the smallest, then the next one, then the next one, and so on, or the largest, next one, and so on. Um, then let's see, merge sort. Merge sort is, again, prototypical, I would say, for divide and conquer, because you have your elements, you split them into two halves, you sort both halves, merge the sorted list. And in that way, I get um, your sorted, your elements sorted. Then we have quick sort. The quick sort again is divide and conquer. Like the cyborgs. So now we're looking at Dijkstra's algorithms, we're talking about shortest path. So I would see Dijkstra's algorithm as a dynamic program. But um, you can also see it as a greedy algorithm, it has elements of both. Somewhere in between, let me put it with a dynamic programming. Um, same for other shortest path algorithms, Elman Ford, Floyd Washer, for instance, I would see those as dynamic programming. Then, uh, Prim or Yannick Prim or Yannick Prim Dijkstra um, and Kruskal's algorithm. Both algorithms for uh, finding minimum spanning trees. So those are greedy algorithms. So far, so good. Then let's look at graphs and graph algorithms. Most common graph representations, I would say, is uh, adjacency matrices, adjacency lists. Uh, basic of algorithms are uh, word first search, depth first search, so traversal algorithms, shortest path algorithms, minimum spanning trees, and more. Some questions. So what is what graph representation would you want to use for breadth first search? For breadth first search, you can get a running time of um, O of number of vertices plus number of edges if you use adjacency lists. So with adjacency matrices, it would be less efficient. So adjacency list is the answer here. Um, what algorithm uh, do you use in the background if, uh, when you do topological sorting, at least, typically? That would be a steps first search. How many edges does a tree on n vertices have? So this is not an algorithmic question, but a pure graph question. If I have a tree on n vertices, I will have n minus 1 edges. And how fast can we compute minimum spanning trees? Yeah, so cross guards algorithm will give you a running time of order number of edges, log number of vertices, Yannick Prim number of edges plus number of vertices, log number of vertices, but for that you will need to use Fibonacci heaps, yeah, so a more advanced data structure to get this running time. And there are even faster algorithms NP hardness. So we have these complexity classes, P, NP, um, problems that we can solve in polynomial time on a Turing machine or um, in polynomial time in a, on a non deterministic Turing machine. That would be NP. Or intuitively, I mean, P is a, are the problems that we can solve in polynomial time. NP, the problems that we can check in polynomial time, and we don't know whether we can solve them in polynomial time. That is a big open problem in computer science, whether p is indeed unequal to np. Some questions for you. What is an NP-hard problem? And what is an NP-complete problem? So NP-hard means um, I can reduce any problem in NP in polynomial time to this problem. NP-complete, additionally, you want that the problem 
itself is in NP. What examples do you know for NP-complete problems? So certainly you are one of you know satisfiability, uh, three sat, um, Hamiltonian cycle, TSP, and probably. And how do you prove NP hardness? Well, that is very close to the question of what is an NP hard problem. You need to give a reduction, but not from all problems in NP, but simply you need another NP hard problem um, and a reduction from there, and then you. This shows that your, that your own problem is NP hard. And then how do we solve NP hard problems? Yeah, so that's a trickier question. <laughs> I mean, you can do exact algorithms, but um, as far as, as we know, um, we always end up with exponential time algorithms. Uh, we can do approximation algorithms. So if we don't want to have the exact best solution, but uh, are fine with something that is close to it, and many more options. So those were the preliminaries I wanted to talk about here. Again, simply the list. Um, and that's all for this video.